all over the house. Oh, thank you, Lord. We just praise you. We thank you. There's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You're mighty, you're awesome. Give you praise. Give you glory. Hallelujah. Nobody like our God. No one like you. Move in this house. Move in this house, oh Lord. Come on, receive your breakthrough today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. week all this past week we were in revival down in lower Alabama areas past Birmingham in a little country church keep that flow guys my goodness <laughs> people were so hungry I mean I'm talking about so hungry for God every word that was spoken it, it, it felt like it hit the hearts of people I saw people delivered from things that they were bound with for so long. I mean, for generations, God was delivering people from a, some spirits of fear, of depression, of all kinds of things. And night after night, just the altars filled. Oh my goodness. One of the songs that just brought breakthrough that they were worshiping over and over again. Says I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Can anybody testify? I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am. I am a child of God. Make that a declaration right now. I'm no longer a slave to fear. But I am. I am a child of God. You won't ravel me with a melody. Come on. You surround. feel like you've been chosen by God. <laughs> you call me by my name. Mm. I've been born again into your family.
your name. Holy is our God. Move among your people, Lord. child of God. That makes all the difference in the world. No longer a slave to fear. No longer a slave of the enemy. No longer a child of, of the old devil. I'm a child of God. How many know we got born again into this family? His blood flows through our veins. Can I get a good amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I know folks told us, they sent us a note. They let us know last week they're going to be out of town. I didn't know everybody was going to be out of town. <laughs> well, not, not everybody. You here, you are here, and we're so blessed, amen. Some headed for the hurricane. I'm thinking, what are you thinking? <laughs> Make a U-turn. Come on back. But uh, we wish them all God's speed and praying for them as they travel, some to the mountains, some down to the coast, some clear across country. I'm in mean, several of our families. Uh, so so I, I'm just thrilled that uh, God kept some of them here, kept you here, because usually we have to hunt for seats. <laughs> and that's a good problem, amen. Well, I'm fired up, I'm pumped up, my goodness. God is awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> I don't know about your God, but my God is amazing. He's, he still works wonders. He still saves, still delivers, still sets the captives free. <laughs> and it's just an exciting journey that we see with God. Amen. And so I bring greetings. Uh, they told me, tell the people they're coming. So you're going to see some folks from Alabama. They speak southern, deep southern. I mean, you have to really listen. And folks from Mississippi, we had folks from Arkansas. It was a general conference of the original Church of God, and uh, we've been so privileged that they've asked us to, to preach the, the camp, the, the, the conference. And it was just wonderful. I mean, you know, 
it was it was in many many ways, and many of them are watching. Uh, they they uh, they wanted to know how you get on YouTube, how you get to the the Facebook, and all this kind of stuff. So if you're watching, I'm just bragging on you. God bless Alabama and all the states that was there from North Carolina, all over. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for all of those. God was touching people in a wonderful way. I mean, they were happy people. Wow, that was one of the things that I noticed. They were just a happy people, happy about Jesus, happy about their salvation. I really didn't see anybody dragging all, you know. <laughs> it was wonderful. It reminded me of, of love's way, happy people, loving Jesus. Amen. So we're just so thrilled, amen, to be back in the house. Hallelujah. Did Andrew do okay on Wednesday? You know, uh, he's my oldest boy. If, he's, if, if they don't go anybody up, if they don't do good, I'm going to get them. <laughs> Pull their papers or something. Make them do 10 sit-ups and I don't know. We'll just work them. But, uh, hey, uh, he loves the Lord. And, uh, and that's one of the families that they took a whole team out there. Um, and so pray for them. Amen. Uh, Raymond is still in uh, Texas, they've been working him day and night, night and day. Uh, they're with uh, CBN and uh, Operation Blessing. We want to bless them, pray for them as they do mighty, wonderful things uh, uh, for the people. And just thank you for you that was sowing and helping. It really uh, is a blessing. Amen. But he'll be back this coming week, I believe. Amen. Only be strong. And very courageous. Only be strong and very courageous. Very early this morning, those words rung in my spirit. As I was laying there just praying and asking God for wisdom, asking God what, he, and I couldn't, I, I thought, that, that was Joshua. And it had to kind of, I had to kind of get clarity, but that was the words that was ringing. So I'm telling you, the Lord has fresh, fresh bread, fresh manna from heaven for us today. Because, this, uh, listen, this is the bakeries of heaven baked this just this morning, okay? <laughs> Only be strong and very courageous. Can I get an amen? amen? In your Bible in Joshua 1, and I want to pick it up from verse number 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Hmm. Now, therefore, arise, go over. Mm. When I read that just a few moments ago again and just refreshing and praying over it, I feel like the Lord was saying that was for somebody in this house. Arise and go over. That's not a suggestion, that's a commandment from the Lord. To arise wherever you are in your life, whatever place you find yourself in. He's saying to you, arise and go over. Go over. Go over whatever Jordan, whatever thing is in your life that's, that's stopping you from, from getting to the promises of God. Come on. Uh, he wants you to arise this morning and just go over. T touch somebody. Say, to arise and, and just go over. T tell the other neighbor. Tell him, arise, go over. Arise, go over. He said, go over this Jordan. You and all this people to the land which I am giving to you, the children of Israel. Hmm. Verse number three says, every place, somebody, somebody say every place. every place, not some of the places, but every place that the sole of your foot will tread. If you can get your foot on it, I have given you. As I said to Moses, number four said, from the wilderness, I love that, I started getting excited. He said, of this Lebanon. And I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> from that wilderness out there, but also this Lebanon. See, I'm just gonna take God's word and put it for now, it's for now. How many know God's word is a now word? It may have, Joshua may have been written many, many, many years ago. But I tell you, the word of God is always fresh. It's like manna from heaven. It's a now word for somebody. You're going over. All you got to do is arise. And I'm going to give you some more that I feel the Lord has put in my spirit. 
This Lebanon, hmm, this one, I'm claiming this Lebanon. There may be another one somewhere else, but this Lebanon, where, where your family is in, in Wilson County and every, and listen, we're not greedy. We just want God to touch Wilson County and every other county that touches this one. If it touches, if it comes close to this one, they're going to be blessed. This Lebanon, say that with me, this Lebanon. And as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, if you study the maps, it is, it is a great big land. All the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun huh. mm. shall be your territory. God is enlarging your space. My space, my space, he's just enlarging that space. Verse number six says this, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Number seven, only be strong. Here's a theme here for people of God. Only be strong and very courageous. Only be strong. Those are the words I heard very early this morning. Only be strong and very courageous. Only be strong and very courageous. There's gonna be stuff and things that's gonna come at you. God is saying to you, only be strong. You're going to ask God, what do you want me to do? What shall I do? What should, where, where, oh, my goodness. What, oh, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's a lot of things happen. Only be strong. Only be strong. You don't have to do a whole lot of things. You don't have to remember a whole lot of things. 17 things, 120 things you have to. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper <laughs> wherever you go. Mm, I still feel this thing so heavy and strong. Number eight, rather number nine, let's just go on. You, you, you can study this whole book actually, the whole chapter is so powerful. He says, have I not commanded you I told you it's not a suggestion. This is a commandment. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is, help me somebody. You need to hear that today. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Mm. <laughs> I, I see in the Revelation, he says, though the, those who have an ear. That he's only speaking to those who have an ear. This may not be for everybody, but if you have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. If you have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. It kind of reminds me of there's a little sign at one of the dentists, uh, and they have more of these little signs. They, they, they tell you they want you to brush your teeth, right? The dentists like to do that. But they tell you, uh, uh, for the kids especially, only brush the teeth that you want to keep. <laughs> it's up to you. You don't have to brush all of them, only the ones you want to keep. How many know I want to keep all of them if, <laughs> that I can and so th this, is, this is that word. Listen, be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed for the Lord. Your God is with you wherever you go. This is a word for the Lord, from, from the Lord, I believe, for somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I, I just came to deliver a message. Uh, we, we're not going to drag this thing out. I, I, I'm just going to, there's a package. Deliver it. You sign for it. It's yours. But first, when the Lord speaks like this, I believe I take that first. He says to me, because I was praying, I was asking, I was, oh, Lord, what do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? I needed wisdom. How I many know as, as pastors, we, we need wisdom how to lead God's people? We, we, we need, we, you know, things come at us 
all kind of directions, different things. And, and so just in that prayer and just praying for so many things. And I know we, we've, we've all been there, we've seen some wonderful things this past year, maybe the, these last few years. We're celebrating uh, uh, our third year as pastoring of this great church and then two years in this building uh, come this, uh, it's actually on the 11th, but we'll celebrate it this next Sunday. So if you can, I, I want you to invite family and friends. I mean, bring them from the north, south, east, and west. Bring them from, from uh, it's a good time to invite your family out of Puerto Rico. Tell them to get out of there, come over here, because they don't have water. They don't have <laughs> Pray for them, okay? It, it's devastating. But if you at all can, invite someone. How many is going to invite somebody? Come on, you're going to have to help me. Ushers, just make sure you watch the hands that go up. The ones that don't, you know, <clears throat> you all have to figure out what we do with those. Only those with the hands up, you get a free cup of coffee. That's why I'm <laughs> I really need for you to come and be here. It's going to be dynamic. I mean, the Lord already gave me a word for, for Sunday. And, 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 and I wanted to preach that, and then this happened this morning. And, and so how many know it's okay to switch midstream and say, Lord, it, it's your, it's, this is your work anyway. This is your work anyway. So as we're praying and as we're seeking God for, for fresh vision, direction, we, we're coming to a close of this year. Here it is, October, my goodness. And, and then 2018 is standing there, and, and I, we need direction. We need to hear what, what God has for us, amen. He that has an ear, I want to have ears that will hear. And I know God has done some amazing things. We've heard of great reports. We've, we've seen some wonderful things and experienced the hand of God here at Love's Way. And I love God doing that. I just thank God for that. And yet, there are, there's been some of those things and challenges that we have faced. How many can say, I've, I've been in a challenge a little bit. I've been in a, you know, it, 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 there were some things that I prayed about, a promise that you received from God's word, and you haven't seen it fulfilled. Come on, be honest with me. You, you just haven't seen it yet. Well, there's a word for you, only be strong. You say, but, but, but it seems so big, and, and people have been under pressure, and they've been under attack of the enemy, and uh, there are those that are sick, pray for, pray for uh, our families that, are, that aren't doing so well this morning. They couldn't be with us. We pray for Brother Don and Ms. Dot and different ones in, 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 in this congregation. We love them so dearly. But there are things that come against people. There are attacks against your marriage. How many know the devil hates your marriage? He hates your kids. I'm sorry, but the devil hates your children. And he'll do whatever it takes to destroy them and take them out. And you say, but I've prayed over this thing. I've prayed for my husband, prayed for my wife, prayed for the marriage, prayed. And we've been in sickness and pain and oppression. All kind of stuff has gone on in you. And it's like, what in the world is there an answer? I see as we begin to read about Moses and, and Joshua and the children of Israel, you, you notice something that where God began to bring them out of Egypt, but they spent 40 years in the desert, 40 years in the wilderness. This is a long time. Anybody 40 years old or close to it? Anybody? Close to it? Yes, me too. <laughs> I have to reverse a little bit, but hey, I'm close to it. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a long time to be in bondage or to, to go through struggle. Forget 40 years. They've been in bondage, in slavery, 450 years. All the life of all these generations. And now, 40 years of, of, of just struggle through the desert. They haven't made it to the promised land. 40 years wandering, and finally after 40 years, here they are at the, at the River Jordan, they at the, the, the foot of Mount Nebo, where Moses was looking over, and they could see the promised land, but they didn't have a way to get there. And uh, now, you know, with all the promises, and here you are so close, now the Bible says in Joshua 1, Moses is dead. Oh, my. This is the man that you called, Lord, to lead us out and take us to the promised land. And now we've gone through the struggle. We've gone through slavery. We've gone through all the stuff. I'm in all of it. And now we are finally here. We can taste it. We can see it. And now he's dead. It's like, 
time and you can't win for losing. What is this? As they come stand at the entrance of their inheritance, they can see it. It reminds me of in Exodus chapter three when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, you remember that? And said to him, I'm gonna use you to bring my people out. And this is what the Lord said in Exodus three and seven. And the Lord said, I surely, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry. Isn't that wonderful that God knows what you're going through? He's, he's not a God that is unaware. He, he's seen and he's heard. I'm here to declare to somebody, whatever you've gone through in your life, God knows everything about it. He says, I've heard, I've seen the oppression of, and I've heard the cries of my people because of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. There should be great comfort in that, that God knows where you're at. If you're like me, I've prayed that many times. God, do you even care? <laughs> there was some time when I needed growing up a little bit. You come to a place where you just know that he loves you. Got a great plan for your life. But there were those times where, you know, the enemy would bring doubt. Has the enemy ever, enemy ever brought doubt in your life, in your heart? God says, I've seen your cry. I've, I've seen, I've, I know your sorrow. Verse 8. Thank you, Lord, for verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good land, a large land. Come on, help me somebody. Say a good land. Tell, tell them somebody, a large land. Hmm. To a land flowing with milk and honey. <laughs> oh my goodness. They go, they're going to go from slavery to a land flowing with milk and honey. You tell me God is not a good God. Hallelujah. But there was this journey to get there. And, and that honey and, and the grapes and all of these wonderful things. I think that was what kept them going. Kept them and, and thinking, oh my goodness. One of these days we're going to taste of that honey. We're going to taste of that milk. We're going to be in that land of freedom and of blessing. It's a good land, God said. To a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites. The Hevites and the Jebusites. My goodness, there are a lot of ites there. You're going to have to face all these people. That's okay. Because it does say that God has already given you the land. All the ites got to go. They, they squatting on your land. They don't even know it. Because God has already organized and told you, you're going to have that land. There's some things that the devil is holding on and gripping. And I've come with a word from the Lord. It's yours and God's about to give it to you. You can't go back. You can't. Come on. Don't get discouraged. Only be strong and very courageous. And you're going to possess some of those things that you thought, oh my goodness, I'm never going to see it. Just hang tight. Don't throw in the towel. Forty years of hoping and longing and praying and believing. It's just one problem. Moses is dead. Moses is dead. What are you going to do? <laughs> Moses is dead, but God's promise is still alive. Every promise that God, see, it's not a man thing. Man didn't promise that man can't deliver it. It's a God thing. The thing that you need and ask of God, he's the one that promised it. He's the one that's going to deliver it. People will come and go. Have you noticed people come and go in your life? But God's promises stay faithful. Hallelujah, somebody. Second Corinthians 1 and 20 says, for all the promises of God in him. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Somebody said yes. yes. And in him. Who? Jesus. Amen. Every promise. Is good. <laughs> oh, the promise is still good. Touch your neighbor, tell him the promise is good. The promise is good. The pro Moses may be dead, but the promise is still good. Hey, they, they, you know, if your grandpapa or somebody in your family wrote out a will and said, now I promise that in the event that I, you know, blah, blah, whatever, uh, how many know that piece of paper is still good even after they had passed? Hallelujah. 
If they deeded that old house to you or that car or something to you, it's still good. There was a promise made and a promissory note or some legal paper was signed. No, even after grandma, grandpa, everybody leaves this earth, the promise is still good. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't get discouraged. Only be strong and very courageous. Said the Lord is with you wherever you go. The promise is good. The inheritance is good. Well, you're going to get your stuff. You're going to eat the fruit of the land. I wish I can get somebody to believe this preacher this morning. Your promise is secure, is safe, is in a good place. Just because Moses is dead. See, we've had an eye on Moses. We have our eye on people, what they can do for us. I'm telling you, God's the one that made that promise. It's good. The promise is good. Can I get a good amen? You will eat the fruit of the land. You will see breakthrough in your life. You're going to see that son come back to Jesus. You're going to see that husband get born again and saved. We've seen it now during this revival. When a little child, a little baby was praying for her daddy and said, oh, I just want my daddy. We went to Arkansas. A little nine, ten-year-old baby crying for her daddy. Daddy, he just left. I tell you what, it was an instantaneous miracle as we agreed with her. The next night, Daddy came walking into that church, gave his heart to Jesus. The promise is true. The promise stays good. Man, what are you believing God for? What promise in his word are you holding on to? Financial breakthrough is still good. The promise is good. Just... Only be strong and be very courageous. What is it you're asking God for? That breakthrough in your, a, a miracle in your life? The promise is good. He's still. Romans 4 says this. I just had to scribble this down so quick. You can't believe this. Romans 4. Come on, preachers, you know you can't just grab something. In the morning. You got you to gotta bite on this thing all month long, all week long. So I'm just giving you a quick, quick bite today. Is McDonald's drive through something. <laughs> Romans 4.20 says this. He's talking about Abraham. He said he did not what? Waver. Another translation says he did not stagger. <laughs> Oh, he did not doubt. He did not, he wasn't up and down with the promise. He was secure in it. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't allow unbelief to mess up the promises. He didn't allow the size of the giant to stop him from believing. He didn't, he didn't allow 25 years of nothing to stop him from claiming his promise. He wavered not, he staggered not at the promise of God. I'm giving you some meat today that's going to help you. That's helping me. My goodness, this is for me. He said he did not stagger. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But, I love that one, was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Was strengthened in faith. How are you going to get strengthened in faith? You give glory to God. You worship. You praise you bless the Lord. <laughs> you give him glory at every turn, at every corner. Give him glory and praise for the promise he made already. You see, but I haven't seen it. You got to praise in advance for the thing that's coming to you. You can't wait for this thing to come. You have to start praising and jumping and glorifying God in advance. That's called faith. If you can see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, that's not faith. Faith is what is invisible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence not thing. You can't see it, but you believe it. You waver not at the promise of God through unbelief, but you were strengthened how? By giving God the glory. There are folks won't give God glory for nothing. They'll sit there like a, like a you know, a, a knot on a log or something, and they won't be moved. They love the song that says, I shall not be, I shall not be. And you wonder why your life is in chaos. It's in a dead spin. You got to learn to praise him, learn to worship him. I said it the other day, one of my favorite preachers said it the other day also, said, my goodness, when you praise God, it kills pride. 
Well, I don't think I should. I can't. I can't. That, that's a pride issue. It's not about you anyway. Well, what is she going to think? What are they going? They can't help you anyway. You lift up your hands to the one who can, to the one who made the promise. Yeah. So if I please, if God is pleased with me, how many know heaven's open? Didn't, G, didn't God say that about Jesus when he looked at his son? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There was something about the life of Jesus that was well pleasing to the father. And he just opened heaven. You want an open heaven? Start pleasing God. The number way, one way you can please God is by faith. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those and them who diligently seek him. Now, I'll just shout all by myself. I'm just going to have a spell and get the breakthrough in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Well, pastor, why are you so happy? Because the breakthrough, man, the promise is still there. I'm hanging on to the promise. And I've seen many of them fulfilled. But boy, there's a whole lot I'm believing God for. I'm believe can I let you in on a secret? I'm believing God and He's doing it. Fill my children, every one of them, and every grandbaby. I just claim anything to do with me has to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean prophesying, doing mighty miracles for God, changing our world is what I'm praying for. And the second praise God, the people who I pastor will find that same passion in their lives. You can't shut this preacher down. I've seen too much, been too far. Seen, I mean, been around the block once or twice. In my little old 57 years, 57 Chevy. That's a good car, good year anyway. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to turn 60. I'm thinking that's like the, 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 the cool area, you know, that, that mighty miracles are going to happen. So I'm just going to hurry the process. But I'll take 57. Because it's got seven in it anyway, so I'm good. Well, I don't know what's going to happen to us. Well, I'll tell you what happened to this church. God's going to use this church mightily to touch the world. People are going to get so on fire for God. You can't stop it. Hallelujah. Hmm. I love it. My, where did we go? Now you still got to read 21. Look at here. This thing gets better. And he says in verse number 21 of the same chapter, he says, and being fully convinced. Are you convinced? I mean, are you, have you settled the thing in your heart? I'm convinced about God's love for me and his power and his grace in my life. I'm convinced. I'm fully persuaded that what he promised he'll do. I'm convinced. I'm, you can't change my mind. He said he was fully convinced that he, uh, what he had promised, he was also able to perform. I'm liking this today. I don't want to spend another day in doubt and fear and unbelief. I don't want to spend another minute. I'm wasting time. I'm burning daylight when I can be doing something for God, huh? holding on to God's promise being fully convinced and let nothing stop us, let nothing deter us. And you just go for God because you're so convinced. huh? What does Paul talk about also? Be, uh, he said, uh, fully the confidence that you gotta have in God. Amen. I'm persuaded he's talking about words like that. Have you been persuaded? Are you convinced of the things that God is wanting to do in your life? He's convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. He's able to deliver. So only be strong. Everybody can do that. Only be strong. Only, only, only be strong. It's one of the things that Jesus said one day to people. He said, only believe. Only believe. Fear not. Only believe. It's not hard. Anybody can believe. He said, I don't know if I can believe. I don't have faith. Yeah, you've been given a measure of faith. The fact that you're here the day you came in and you sat down on that chair like you built the thing. You had faith to sit in it. You didn't doubt, oh my goodness, will this thing hold me? What do you think? You just went out there and sat yourself down. Faith. Amen. 
only be strong, very courageous. And I close with this, our guys are coming. Once you do that, once, you, once you've settled the fact and you're fully convinced and you're just strong in God, you, you become bold. How do you do that? I, I wish I had more time. How does that boldness get in your life? How, how do you become fully convinced where the devil can't? I mean, so many times he brings this, this doubt and unbelief like he did with Eve. He'll always come to preach at you. But how, how, how come you can be strong and get to a place that you're fully convinced, you're persuaded that neither life nor death nor anything can separate me from the, you just persuade it. There is no doubt about this thing. How do you get to that place? That's why the Bible says, Be filled with the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk after the Spirit of God. You'll not fulfill. You don't have time to fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't have time to listen to the naysayer. You don't have time to, because you're so busy pleasing God. You're so busy working the kingdom. Amen. Only be strong. So now he says, he's saying to you and I, once you've stood firm, once you've believed, once you say, I've, I'm declaring this with my mouth, I'm strong, I'm courageous. Next thing you do is arise. He says, now arise. Go over. Arise is a command. Arise. I've seen that arise in Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, go over. Arise, go and possess. Arise, see it happen in your life. Arise and go get it in Jesus' name. You want that job? Arise and go in Jesus' name. Go over. Go over that obstacle, that thing that's in your way. Arise and just go over it. Arise, climb over it. Arise, defeat the thing that's in front of you. Arise. When there's a mountain, speak to it in faith. And he's got to move in Jesus' name. Every hindrance, everything that stands in your way. Oh, arise this morning. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Because you know one thing, that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Verse number 11, and I close. Not only got to be strong, courageous, arise, go over. Verse number 11, I don't think I've given it to you guys. Joshua went throughout the whole camp of Israel. He said, boys, ladies, within three days, within three days, you will taste of the fruit. Within three days, we're crossing over. It may have taken us 40 years to get here, but within three days, we're going to be there. I pray somebody grabs a hold of that word for somebody, somewhere. You, 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 there's, a, there's a period, a timeline that they told you. I'm telling you, this is going to supersede what they told you. Within three days, something miraculous is about to break through in your life. Within three days. He said to them, prepare yourself. Pass through the camp. Command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days, you will cross over this Jordan. You will, within three days, there's a word for somebody, receive it in the name of Jesus. Within three days, that thing that was locked up, whether it was a business deal or something, is going to be loose within three days. You will see the breakthrough. You will possess your inheritance to go over to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Within three days for somebody. Within three days. Now, if that three days was for somebody back in, in Joshua's day, I think God's just super seed and super fast and super fast forward this thing that you don't have to wait for some for three days. Right now is your breakthrough day. The moment you hear, faith arises. Your breakthrough has just happened for you today. Right now in Jesus' name. You don't have to wait three days. There's some that's going to see that miracle. For somebody else, your breakthrough is right now. It's a right now miracle. How many need a right now miracle? Some can say, well, it, it took so long and I could wait three days. If that's you, God bless you, you're going to see it happen. But if you say, I can't wait no longer, I got to have it happen. 
Well, when you begin to read Joshua 3, he went through the camp and he said, tomorrow, <laughs> he, he moved it up. He said, tomorrow, by this time, we're crossing over. You read a little bit more and he start telling the, the priest says, hey, boys, get the ark on top on your shoulders and start marching. And when your foot touches the water, instantaneously, that moment, the thing is gonna move. There's some of you who are gonna walk in faith this morning. You're going to rise in faith and you're going to take the ark or the presence of God in your life and you're going to start marching. And as you march, I'm telling you, when your foot touches that place of faith, victory is going to happen for you. Stand all over this place today. There's a prophetic word to somebody today. For somebody, you're going to come and testify within three days. You'll see your breakthrough. For somebody else, it's going to happen today. Before the day is out, you must come and testify. For somebody, it's happening even now. He says, the word is nigh even in your mouth. Now faith is. Not tomorrow faith will be. Hebrews 11 says, now, now, present tense, faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report is ready for an instantaneous right now suddenly miracle I don't know how many steps you have to take but he said to the priest take the ark upon your shoulders and lead the people start marching when you get to the edge of your hindrance the thing that's blocking you step on it when your foot touches it, it'll open. Did you know that's how faith works? You can hear it, you can hear it, you can hear it, but you're gonna have to activate it. That's why when the Lord called Lazarus, he added an action word to it, he said, come forth. Lazarus then at that moment had a choice to make. Do I stay in this tomb? when I've heard his voice, or do I actually get up? But, but, but I'm bound, I, I can't walk so good. I don't care what you have to do. He must have hopped out of that place. He said to the little girl that was dead, Dalila Khumbi, arise, little girl. He said to the man at the pool of mercy, arise, take up your bed. Sometimes the request seems foolish and crazy. Lord, how do you expect me to, 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 to? well, he is. Because he's about to give you a miracle, a breakthrough that you have not seen before. If you'll take that step of faith, it's whatever you're asking God for, I'm not talking about little, small little hills, molehill. I'm talking about mountains that's in your life. If you'll take a step of faith to this altar right now as we worship the Lord, I'm believing something is breaking loose off of you. I'm believing something is moving. I'm believing water to part and give you clear access to your inheritance, to your breakthroughs. That's you. Come right now in Jesus' name. Let's worship him. Come on. You have been so, so Thank good you, Lord. to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before I took Thank a you, Lord. breath, you breathed your life in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have been so, so you, kind to me. Thank you, Lord. Before I spoke a word. Thank you, Lord. These are steps of faith. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. Taking a step of faith. You have been so, so good to me. 